Hello, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space out in my backyard. Tonight, we have finally gotten the garden planned out on paper. I spent my whole day doing this today. We have all of our seeds separated into which uh, week we should be planting them. And we have everything written out in our garden planner. I'm so excited, y'all. Earlier today, I was running around the house saying, I am so excited. Because <laughs> it's almost planting season, right? So I did a video uh, a little while ago about, you know, kind of planning out. And people said they would like to see part two. So with that being said, we are going to get into part two. This is kind of teachy teachy. <laughs> So I hope that you still enjoy it. Um, so let's start first with the planner. So this is the planner that I use for my life. And there isn't a lot on gardening in here, but it does tell me when I need to start my seeds. Um, I'm also planning to put in here when I need to start seeds for succession sowing as well as for fall. But right now we are at spring and we are at summer. <laughs> so let's take a gander into this book really quick. Um, and I showed you in the last video where I write out the weeks until it's time to plant. And so you can see in there, I have the weeks until it's time to plant. Um, I don't do my planning based off of the last frost date. I do my planning based off of the day I plan to plant out. I am in a small space and so I don't want to have my seedlings in my house for, you know, like if you do it from eight weeks <laughs> and then your frost is two or three weeks late, then you now have your seedlings in your house for 10 to 11 weeks. I do not want to do that. Um, and so I am planting out in the beginning of May. And so I am planting my seeds, starting my seeds or my uh, potato slips or chitting my potatoes, things like that. Um, from the time that I plan to plant out. And so that's what I've done in my planner. And then the planners that I have, it tell it you have like a list to do and things like that. And so you see right there, this is March where I say that I want to start my peppers and my tomatoes. Because the actual calendar is on another page, I also write it on the numbered page back here. So there's a line for each day and I write it back here as well. And that way I know that it is my eight week mark and that I need to be starting tomatoes, tomatillos, peppers, basil, loofah, roselle, and moringa in about two weeks in my case. So very much excited about that. Um, the next thing that I do is once I figure out what week everything is supposed to be in, I put them in their own Ziploc bags. So when it is time for me to start those seeds, I won't have to go looking for them. I won't have to go and put them together. They're already together. These are the things that I plan to plant two weeks from the time that I plant out. These are the things that I plan to direct sow. These are the things I plan to plant out eight weeks, four weeks, and six weeks. And so every year, this is how I plan to plant out. And so with that being said, I can reuse these bags but anyway, that's the way that I keep them together. And I work a full-time job, as most people know. So this is what will help me to stay on track uh, because I don't plan to buy any starts. Nothing wrong with buying starts. I just don't plan to because I have so many things that I want to grow and so many varieties of things that I want to grow. So I, uh, I prefer to start from C. Okay, next thing I want to show you is my planning notebook. This is where all the magic happens. This is where I literally draw out my garden. And because this is a new notebook, I this year I decided to draw each bed separately and write notes for myself. Um, and so we're going to go through this really quickly. I'm not going to hold you long tonight uh, because there isn't a lot to talk about. But I do want people to see how I plan. And so um, if you are wondering like where to start... This is a good place to start. And you don't have to. But again, like I said, I work a full-time job. So just going off the cuff and wild and willy-nilly, 
I don't know where I would be if I did not plan out my garden. My notebook from last year got wet um, in the greenhouse um, last year. And so I had to get a new one and I thought this one was perfect. It says never stop growing. I've shown y'all that before, but I just thought this was a perfect little book to use. So we are gonna get into it really quick. I'm gonna show you exactly what I do and how I plan out my garden. But listen, I know I said it already. I'm so excited because once I get this done, I feel very much um, in control. Like I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I know where I'm supposed to be going with this. So I feel so good right now. It was worth all the hours I took today to get it done. Um, I probably spent three hours doing this today, but I could have definitely done it over a period of time i just didn't have time to uh, but i'm very excited i feel very much in control now i feel like i can go and buy the seeds that i maybe don't have i feel like i can go ahead and get my potatoes now because i feel like i know where things are gonna go i know i have space for everything and i'm just ready to go oh and we're gonna redo the greenhouse this year because i plan to grow more in that um, and so very excited to do that too. At this point, uh, I'm feeling excited for spring and for summer. <laughs> All right, so we have our gardening notebook here. Open it up and I'm gonna show you just exactly how I plan out my garden. So this is the bed near the entrance of the garden. I do not plan out my orchard area where the herbs and things are because it's just not necessary. I kind of throw things in there as I go. Um, but so just as an example, this bed is nine by two. So it's nine feet long, two feet wide. Um, and then I make sections for my square feet because I do plant in the square feet method. So every box that you see, that's a square foot. Um, and if you remember this year, I said that I wanted to grow uh, more intensely. And so with that being said, I have planned this out very intensely planted and I'm hoping for the best. I am planning to make sure that I put more nitrogen in the soil because I will be planting uh, so intensely. So with that being said, um, I'm going to use some blood meal um, and then some granulated fertilizer. But that is all aside from either comfrey tea or uh, fish emulsion. So back, back to this. <laughs> So right here you see that I have bush beans written in here. So we're going to do bush beans in some of the square foot uh, sections. Uh, and then in between that we're going to do squash and zucchini. And then in between those four plants, well this is three because my squash is going to go in two spots. We're going to put, I want to say uh, nasturtiums. So there will be nasturtiums in the middle of all of my plants. If I'm lucky, the nasturtiums will be a trap crop uh, for my zucchini. And I'm also going to put some marigolds across the front of this bed. And there's a trellis in this bed. Um, and that's where we're going to let our cucumbers grow up. Now, one of the things that I'm also going to do is I am going to wait to plant my squash and my zucchini until my beans and nasturtiums and marigold have gotten some size on them because zucchinis grow fast and I don't want them to shade them out. So for a portion of the time when I first plant out where the squash and the zucchini are, uh, we won't have anything growing there because I want my marigolds, bush beans, and uh, cucumbers and nasturtiums to get up a little bit of size. So the other thing I do is I make notes for myself and this way I know how many plants I need for each one of the beds, um, how many seeds I need. So this says 90 seeds and that is because we are doing bush beans in 10 spots. And with that being said, you can put nine bean plants in one square foot. So yes, I need 90 <laughs> <laughs> bean seeds and I am going to direct sow those seeds and so with that being said I also write direct sow on it so that's one bed right there hope that was uh helpful for you um and I do the same thing for all beds after that um and then if I can't write the words I'll use shapes so for instance this square goes with nasturtiums 
and this is where I'm going to be planting my melons and there's a trellis on the back of this bed so it's not going to be melons just kind of sprawling everywhere the melons will be going up the trellis um, I'm going to have eggplant in this bed as well and more bush beans I plan to have bush beans literally all over the garden this year Beans give nitrogen back to the soil. I love beans, and so I want beans everywhere because I want to be able to preserve them. So with this new intense planting that I'm planning to do this year, um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to put a lot of bush beans everywhere. And then on the front of this bed, I'm also going to do some dwarf sunflowers. I did that before. Um, it might have been last year, early last year, and they were beautiful. They were uh, dwarf sunflowers, so they were small teddy bear sunflowers. And then I got another dwarf variety for the hydroponics growing system um, and so I'm gonna put a good amount of those out there too this year this is my next bed this is one of the uh, block beds and so I am planning that out to have like some flowers in the bed so we have asters in the beds um, we have some tomatillos in the bed, some calendula, some sunflower. Uh, we're doing our zucchini and marigolds together again. Don't know how that's going to work. More bush beans. Also going to throw some onions in there. Um, and then I've made my little plans for myself. And where the trellis is, like, so this is the west side of the trellis. In this bed, there's a trellis that goes um, on this side. And then there's a trellis that goes on this side. And so I call the one up here the west side of the trellis. And then I call the one down here the east side of the trellis. And so you can see right here where I'm going to put the things on the trellis. So the east side of the trellis will have national pickling cucumbers on them. The west side trellis will have tromboncino squash. Um, and then I tell myself how many plants I need as well. So that's kind of, you know, how I plan out my garden beds. I, I, it works for me here. We have the bed that's in front of the strawberry bed. And this is going to be more flowers than anything. But I did throw some bush beans down at the bottom. Because the taller plants, I also want to make sure I have plants um, down on the, on the soil. Things that don't grow as tall. Because they probably won't get too shaded. Because like zinnias, they grow tall. Um, kind of the same way that sorrel does. They are a bit more bushier. But I think that the beans would still be able to uh, live up under them. We're, it's, it's all trial and error. We're going to give that a try this year. Um, and so this is where my gumfrina and scabiosa will be too. So it'll be right in the front um, of the zinnias. So what I'm hoping for is the zinnias to get tall, the scabiosa to get mid-sized, then the beans will be here, you know, closer to the ground. So will the marigolds. And marigolds will get quite wide. And so what I'm hoping is that this, these things, like the uh, scabiosa and the gumfrina, uh, the bush beans and the marigolds, will kind of act as a ground cover. The other thing with the marigolds is my strawberries always try to come over on the other bed. I'm hoping... <laughs> <laughs> that the marigolds will be somewhat of a wall for the strawberries. So that is the plan. We will see how it goes. <laughs> Next bed, this is another block bed. Um, and so we have, this is the bed that the leeks are in right now. So we're just going to keep that leek thing going because what I did notice is when I started to pull the leeks, the other leeks started to get bigger. And that worked out well. And we will probably do that from here on out. But we have more leeks. We're, we're going to pull all of them that's been in for, a, a at this point, almost a year. So we're definitely going to pull all of those. And then we're going to plant some new leeks out. Then we have some Swiss chard that's already in the bed. I'm probably going to start a few more because they have been through this winter. Um, I have, though, seen them go through a rough winter. And then once it warmed back up, because the plant and the roots are not dead they just start to grow again so we'll see what happens um, and then we have some more bush beans like I said we're gonna put beans in almost every bed this year and then we're gonna do squash and marigolds we are hopeful we're very much hopeful <laughs> that this keeps the squash bugs away I don't know if it will or not um, and then we have basil which um, basil is also a herb with quite a smell so maybe that will help too and then you have more onions back here. And then we're going to put some dahlias and two tree collards. This is the back of the bed. This is the south-facing portion of the bed. So that's why I'm putting either um, lanky type things up and down, which are leeks, um, and then the shorter things in front. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and so you see these circles. 
they go with the nasturtiums. So I'm also planning to put nasturtiums around these beds. Um, and we also will still have the things that are in the brick hole. So the garlic and the onions will be in the brick holes. But I think it would be beautiful to have the nasturtiums just kind of falling over the side. I think it would be just a beautiful thing. This is another bed. This is the one near the compost pile um, and the fence. And so the trellis is somewhat in the middle of that bed. I made sure that I did it where the trellis shows in the middle so that I know that I can get more plants in front. And so I'm hoping to get quite a bit of calendula over here. Um, and so, and, and then my sorrel, my roselle will be in the back. It grew very well back there last year. And so that's where we're putting it back at this year. Um, and then we're gonna have some bush beans, some dwarf sunflowers and some more bush beans and dwarf sunflowers and then eggplants and marigold and then we have cu cucumbers on this trellis as well as some runner beans so i think that's going to be cute and then borage which is beautiful which is going to bring all kind of bees which it was over here last year so i'm sure it's going to self sow itself and then i made sure to remind myself that we're going to need to stake it borage gets huge so now we're planning out the bed nearest to the uh chicken area and so, you know, we grew sweet potatoes here two years now. So we're just going to grow them there again. Um, it stays right moist over here and sweet potatoes like moisture. Last year, I planted a yarrow here. And so I'm hopeful that that yarrow will come back. Um, and then, you know, I don't have to plant it. But I'm going to plant some more yarrow just in case. Um, some more bush beans, some kakuzi squash, some amaranth, some asters, sorrel, and nasturtiums. So those are all the beds that we are going to plant out. This is the best way I could do this, y'all. I, I wanted y'all to be able to see the book. <laughs> and I know now that I need to get one of the ones that, like, come down so I could have just set the book here. You, you live and you learn. Never done a video quite like this before, but people said that they wanted to see it, and so I'm willing to show it. So you're going to have to look at me with the camera. <laughs> the other camera in front of me, unfortunately. All right, so the next thing that I do is I plan out how many seeds I need to start, how many plants I'm going to need. And so here you see we got bush beans everywhere, so we need 288 uh, bush bean seeds. Uh, sorrel, we're doing seven plants, calendula, watermelon. So like this is literally the whole plan that I have so that I know how many plants I'm going to need. Um, and so like right here, we have 48 onions um, in the beds, but there's no count uh, for the brick holes yet. So once I get a count for the brick holes, I'll know how many onions I need. Uh, dahlias, I only have three seeds, so I put two, um, and then I need to find more space because I want way more dahlias than that in my garden. And I just left Lowe's with my daughter, and they had dahlia tubers in there. I've actually never grown from tubers, but I'm willing to learn, I suppose. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's kind of what I do. And I refer back to these pages to know what needs to be written on this page. So this is very much for me to know how many plants to bring out if I'm going to plant out a bed at a time or how many plants to put on that bed, like when they're hardening off, if, if that's what I want to do. So I refer back to these pages uh, so that when I am... Planting my seeds, I can use just this one page to decide how many seeds I need. And the next thing that I do is I write notes for myself. And this list will continue to grow. This is not like the be uh, end-all, be-all list. This list will continue to grow. Like right now, I'm reminding myself that I want to have um, large sunflowers at the end of each trellis. And that's so that I can tie them to the trellis because sunflowers will flop over and I need somewhere for them to stand. And I've done that before and it worked out very well. So I know I need 14 uh, large sunflowers, so the mammoth sunflowers. And then we're going to have two tree collards in the orchard area by the trellis. And since I did not plan out the orchard area, this is where I will remember what else needs to go in the orchard area as well. Um, and this is where I told myself to plant the zucchini and the squash after about two weeks. Same thing with the borage because those two plants grow very fast. I don't want them to shade things that haven't had a chance to grow. 
Uh, next thing is start your eggplant now. Completely forgot about eggplant. Eggplant is one of those things that I like to start like 10 weeks early. So I still have about a week. I'll plant them next week, but um, I didn't have them on my plan. So yes, um, we're going to start our eggplant now, which is really next week. <laughs> and the last thing I do is um, I plan out my grow bags. So I have 66 filled grow bags. I probably have 72 grow bags total, honestly, <laughs> but they're not filled and I have to find somewhere to, for them to go. Um, but I know I want 14 bags of potatoes because I grew, I think, like six bags of potatoes last year. We ran out of them yeah, before winter, so I want more. So we'll be growing 14 bags of potatoes. Two of the bags will be used for ginger. Two of the bags will be used for turmeric. Uh, we're going to do six bags of cherry tomatoes and cherry or grape tomatoes. So I'm only growing one of each cherry tomato plant. So cross your fingers for me. <laughs> but I'm not putting them in the beds this year. I'm literally putting all tomatoes, all peppers in the bags. Um, and then we're going to do slicer tomatoes, 16 of those. So we have... Uh, I don't know, four, 13 or 14 varieties, but I want to have three Cherokee purple and two pineapple. Um, and so we had to, you know, a lot for those additional bags. Um, and then the paste tomatoes, we're doing 12 bags of those because like I said, I want to have enough uh, paste tomatoes to make a good amount of spaghetti sauce, to make some salsa, to make some paste, to make some powder. I want all of that. And so I want to grow more paste tomatoes this year than I ever have before. And so we will see how that goes. Uh, the next thing is the peppers. Um, and so we're doing 14 bags of peppers. And then we want three bags of shishito, two poblano, and two habanada. So those are kind of the ones that I want for snacking, really. And, and they are also very, these two, the habanada and the shishito, are very prolific. Poblano, not so much. I just really like the taste of poblano peppers. Um, and then the last thing I plan out is my greenhouse. And so, like I said, we're going to do something different with the greenhouse this year. And I'm thinking I'm going to plant a uh, slice of tomatoes in there and cucumbers. And if I think of something else, then I'll put that in the greenhouse too. But we also want to plan out the greenhouse, which I am not done with yet. Um, but I will be soon. So that's how I plan out my garden. I really do hope it was helpful. It's nothing fancy. Um, and if I had a bigger notebook, I would have drawn the whole garden on one page. But I do find now that I've done it this way that I think I get more information by doing it this way. Um, and then I can plant one bed at a time and I won't get confused. Also, I don't have to take this book outside because I could literally take a picture of this and then my book won't get wet. <laughs> <laughs> but I will have prepared for the garden this year. So uh, I think this is going to be short. I don't know. We will see. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to visit me over on Instagram where I post about the things going on in the garden almost every day. Bye, y'all.